ran nearly erasing an 18 point halftime deficit got it to single digits a couple times in the second half but just couldn't quite close the deal as charlotte now falls to four and two early on the season but still splitting a road trip a quick road trip that is to the sunshine state one and one each before heading home on sunday we'll have more of that here in just a few moments your leading score tonight for the hornets gordon hayward with a team high 23 points Hayward catch and shoot three on the way. Battles in another one. Gordon Hayward, yet another Lowe's drilling three-point shot. He's nailed three this half. He's got 16 points now. Yeah, Gordon looked really good in the second half there. Eight of 15 from the floor. That included a five of eight clip from beyond the arc. He also chipped in with six rebounds and four assists as well. Your play of the game, I'm going to go with the no-brainer. It's Miles Bridges. Gives the high post to Miles Bridges. He'll face up against Adebayo. Runs right by him. Up with a right-handed finger roll. Yes, and one opportunity. That got it to within eight. Bridges couldn't convert on the and one opportunity on the other side of that call, but he still finishes with 22 points, nine of 21 from the floor. The three-pointing was three-point shooting was an issue today for Miles. He was two and nine from beyond the arc. Eight rebounds, though, in total. Those were the sounds of the game presented by Charlotte Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat Associates. Senta is the official eye, ear, nose, and throat care providers of your Charlotte Hornets. Once again, your final score, 114 to 99. The Hornets fall in Miami. For more on the box score, Here's Sam Farber. All right, thank you, Rob. Hornets falling 114 to 99 with the loss. Charlotte is now four and two on the season. Miami with the victory, four and one. They'll slide a half game above the Hornets in the Eastern Conference as well as the Southeast Division standing. So a doubly painful loss in that regard. But overall, I thought we saw a lot of progress from the Hornets in the second half. They did close what was as high as a 26 point lead all the way down to six at one stage of the game. Uh, they do win the second half over the Miami Heat, although obviously after digging themselves such a large hole in the first half, uh, just too much to overcome. They're held under 100 for the first time all season, and they were held under 30 in all four quarters of this one. Speaks to how good of a defensive team Miami is. Charlotte did get a little bit of a boost, I thought, from P.J. Washington, our Arrow Exterminators defensive player of the game. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll see, I'm sure, even stronger efforts from him moving forward. But he was a real spark in the first half trying to get the Hornets back into it. He ends up with nine points and five rebounds in this one. A career-high 15 points and a career-high two made threes from Cody Martin, who's still shooting 50% from beyond the arc on the season. 17 points for Kelly Oubre Jr., 22 for Miles Bridges, and 23 a team high for Gordon Hayward. Miami Heat led by Jimmy Butler, who had 32 points. He was 7 of 7 from the free throw line. Tyler Hero had 26 points off the bench. He was 4 of 4 from the free throw line. And Bam Adebayo had 26 points and 19 rebounds. He was 6 for 6 from the free throw line. Uh, Hornets needed every edge they could get, and they were given none by Miami, who was a perfect 19 for 19 from the charity stripe. Hornets are down in the lower third, at the very least, in free throw shooting this season. They go 16 for 22, so room for improvement in that category. Ultimately, Rob, I thought this game came down to the paint where Miami was just absolutely dominant. They had 60 rebounds to the Hornets, 37. Second chance points, the Heat had 22 to the Hornets, 13. And the big difference, points in the paint, it was a plus 14 category for Miami in a game in which they won by 15. So I thought that was the stat that really told the tale. Hornets will hope for brighter tomorrows. Tomorrow, a travel day, kind of, for the Hornets. Uh, but their next opportunity to get this bad taste out of their mouth will come on Halloween for a very spooky game preview. Let's go to Rob Longo. I can't wait for Halloween to be over. The Hornets head back to the Queen City for the start of a brief two-game homestand to take on the Portland Trailblazers. Moves in the lane. Shot rejected by Washington. Here comes Martin. Martin gliding into the lane. Right-hand finger roll. Yes, plus the foul. This will be the first night of a home back-to-back -back for Charlotte as the Hornets split the series with Portland last season with each team holding serve at home. That was a really good game that the Hornets played at home that you heard that highlight from. So while the Hornets were ranked 21st in defensive rating heading into tonight, Portland was ranked 8th in offensive rating. So the good news is for Charlotte that they were, of course, ranked 1st in offensive rating before tonight's game. So you can probably expect a high-scoring affair on Sunday. Coverage begins at 7 right here on the Hornets Radio Network with pregame coverage beginning at 6 on flagship station Sports Radio FNZ. And tickets are still 
still available at Hornets.com in the Hornets mobile app. Should be an entertaining and, we'll say, spooky one on Sunday, Sam. I'll get in the holiday spirit. There you go, Rob. Oh, that's that's much better. No tricks, all treats from Rob Longo, producer extraordinaire, back at the controls in our Hornets Radio Network studios. A reminder, if you're listening on our flagship station, Sports Radio FNZ, you'll hear further post-game coverage. Kyle, Boo, Bailey, and Spooky Stan Norfleet will have it all from the Hornets flagship station, Sports Radio FNZ. This was a fun one, unfortunately. Hornets have to settle for silver linings tonight, falling 114 to 99 to the Miami Heat. Thanks to our producer back at the Hornets Radio Network Studios, Rob Longo, and our courtside engineer, Santiago Rodriguez, the great Santiago Rodriguez, here with us inside FTX Arena. Our thanks to him and everyone here with the Heat for all their help tonight. Most of all, thanks to all of you for tuning in. We'll talk to you again on Halloween when the Hornets host the Portland Trailblazers. Tickets are, of course, available at hornets.com till next time for everyone here i'm sam farber saying it's been a pleasure and a privilege having you along stick around if you're on our flagship station kyle bailey and stan norfleet are next you've been listening to hornets basketball on sports radio fnz and the hornets radio network charlotte hornets basketball is brought to you by novon health the official health care provider of the Charlotte Hornets. Now Miles Bridges, he'll go and dice it on top of Clint Capella. Are you kidding me? Oh, no, he didn't. Also brought to you by Spectrum Mobile. Spectrum Mobile now has unlimited talk, text, and data for $29.99. Switch and save up to 60% at SpectrumMobile.com. Ahead of the pack, Terry Rozier throws it down over Kevin Durant, plus the foul. Oh, my goodness. Here's the voice of your show. Thank you for listening to a special presentation on Sports Radio FNZ Charlotte. Sports Radio FNZ Charlotte. A Radio One station. A Radio One station. You're listening to the Hornets Post Game Show on Sports Radio FNZ. This is Hornets post game on Sports Radio FNZ, and the Hornets not one of their better nights. They entered this one leading the league in scoring at 121.2 points per game, tops in offensive rating. But tonight they're held to a season low 99 points. The Heat score 114, and the Hornets fall to four and two. Kyle Bailey, Stan Norfleet here with you, reacting to what just happened down in South Beach. And Stan Norfleet, uh, you and I both agree they they lost this game in large part due to a, a first half where they just couldn't score the basketball. Yeah, first half was tough. Miami opened up the game going on an 11-0 run uh, from the 9-15 mark down to 6-23. Uh, the score was, what, 13-7. Sloppy first five, seven minutes for both teams. And then at the end of the day, it's some of the same things that we discuss when things don't go well for the scene. Slow start in the first half, mm -hmm. rebounding, points in the paint, second chance points as well, not able to get out in the break and start uh, their offense there. Out-rebounded in the first quarter, 20-8. to eight. All of the things that we talk about, it just didn't happen. But there were some bright spots. Uh, Kelly Oubre Jr. early. Uh, P.J. Washington throughout the game. I thought Borrego went away from Mason Plumley and went with P.J. Congratulations to him. So, look, bottom line for me, KB, tonight you saw a veteran, defensive-minded, tough, gritty, experienced team Tell the young up-and-coming team, remember this when it comes playoff time. Yep. This is how you play at this level. And uh, it took the Hornets a while to respond. But they did make a game out of it. I know that was long-winded, but a lot more to come. No, I, I think you hit on the right point right there because we're talking about the Hornets being tops in the NBA in offensive rating right. coming into this one. The Heat were the best team Top in the defense. NBA in defensive yep. rating. So it was a clash of two styles. And as you said, a veteran Heat team got off to a great start. Yep. And Tyler Hero in the first half. Everything from the you know the the, the big three off the glass oh, at, at the, the end buzzer, of the first the quarter, the first quarter yeah. on through the second quarter. I mean, he just had himself a night. And the Heat just pushed all the right buttons there in the first half 32 for jimmy butler 26 for bam Adebayo. he had 19 rebounds tonight and that rebounding margin is a story unto itself tyler hero also 18 points in the first half i mean if you look at that rebounding margin brother oh where was it at i just saw it 60 37 60 to 37 Miami's bench points, largely because of tyler hero 40 to 30 points in the paint bam out Jimmy Butler, 54 to 40 was the differential of points in the paint. 
The Miami Heat scored 30 points in three of the four quarters. The one quarter they didn't, Hornets got in the third, got back in the game, largely because Gordon Hayward, what I have? Hayward, Miles, and Cody all went 500 from the three-point line. That's what got them back in it. But the Hornets didn't have a single quarter. This is the number one offensive team in the league coming in. Not a single quarter that they scored 30 points. That's it, the difference. It really is. 84 points tonight combined between Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Tyler Hero. Oof. I mean, it tells a big part of the story. 84 of their 114 coming from those three guys. And getting back to the Hornets, you're rattling off names like Gordon Hayward, Miles Bridges, who went for 23 and 22 apiece, 15 for Cody Martin, and we haven't gotten to LaMelo Ball yet. LaMelo's now played back-to-back uh, subpar games tonight, just six points on two of 14 shooting. Oh,